Hello, my name is Anya, and today we are going to set up a portal where an admin can add, edit, and delete users on the application. Here I have just a skeleton of what a dashboard may look like. So I've got some users, a delete button, an edit button, and then also a plus button to add users. And right now, just the way it's set up, I have a group inside each cell of the repeating group and its data source is just the current cell's user. So right now it's just a UI skeleton. There's no logic added behind it. So let's go ahead and do that. The easiest of which is the delete. So I'm going to click on this icon over here and then add a workflow. And I'm going to go under data things and just click delete a thing. And the thing we're going to delete is our group users user, which is the group that is storing the current cells user. And that's it. Let's go test this out. I'm going to reload and just try to delete John. And easy enough, we can look back in our database and we can see John is no longer there. Now let's work on the edit. For us to be able to edit the user, we need to have some sort of pop-up or UI to actually be able to select the field that we want to change. So I'm not going to focus on making this too nice, but I'm just going to go ahead and drag a pop-up over here. And I'm going to give it a type content user. So when we're altering the user, we know exactly which user we're talking about. And all I want to do is drag some text in here to read the parent group. And the parent group is the pop-up. The parent group's user's email. I did not make this pop-up responsive, but it's okay. And I'm going to go ahead and drag a drop-down on here. And let me actually show you why. So if I go to the database and look at my user data type, I added this field called role in addition to the built-in ones like email. And let's just give it a default role. And this is a type of role, which is an option set I set up to have three different options. Let's say I want to edit the role of a user. Well, this is how I would do that. I'm going to have a drop down over here. And instead of static options, I'm going to choose dynamic options. And it's going to be all of the roles in the database. And the option caption is just going to be the current options display, which is a fancy word for what you actually see when you're selecting a role. And I'm going to give it a default value of whatever the user's current role is. I'm going to say this input should not be empty, and it never will be because we have a default value. And let's just drag a button in here and click Submit Changes. And now we can set up the workflow. So when this button Submit is clicked, we want to make changes to the pop-ups user. And the thing we want to change is their role, and we want to set it equal to our drop-down's value. Then we just want to be able to hide the pop-up. But right now, we have no logic tied to this button, so clicking this it doesn't open the pop-up. So let's go ahead and add that in. When this is clicked, we just want to show our pop-up. And we can test this out. I'm going to click on Kate, our edit button. It's going to show our pop-up. And we can actually see that this is reading parent group's user, which is somehow empty. So what does that mean? Why is it empty? Well, actually, when we went ahead and we edited the workshop, the workflow and we showed the pop-up, we didn't send any information to it. So all we're doing is showing a pop-up, but it's not storing the data that we want. So what we actually need to do is we need to display the data. And the data we need to display is the parent group's user, which is just the current cell's user. We can do that before displaying the pop-up. What this does now when we look at it step by step is it's going to 
send this user, Kate, to the pop-up. And now we can see dynamic stuff like Kate at gmail.com is a marketing specialist. We can go ahead and change that. Let's make Kate a manager. And then click submit. This is making ch changes to the current pop-ups user, which is Kate, and it's setting its role to manager. And then it is hiding the pop-up. So now when we go ahead and click this, we can see that her role is by default manager. And in the database, we can see that Kate's role has been changed to manager. Great, two out of three done. Let's finish the last one. This is when the owner of the database wants to be able to manually add in a user. And this becomes a little complicated because in the typical sign-up login workflow, the user needs an email and a password, but we can't very well set a password for them. So what we need to do is, again, something with a pop-up because we need to know what email we want associated with the new user. This pop-up needs no information. All it needs is a simple input field. And you can add the necessary checks to make sure this input is actually reading an email. I'm just gonna go ahead and do that. Say this input should not be empty and trust that the user will use it properly just for the sake of this demonstration. And add in a bubble, um, a button, which will read add. Now we can start tying these together. Let's just name this pop-up add a user. When this plus sign is clicked, the person wants to add a user. So what we wanna do is we wanna show them, we're not toggling, we want to show them our pop-up add a user. From there, show the pop-up, they need to put in the email of the user they want to add, and then they click this button, add, which should do two things. Firstly, it should create an account for someone else, and the email of the account we're creating is just going to be our input A's value. And that looks good, but what's the role of the user that we just created? Well, for that, we actually want to add in a drop down again. Going to drag that on here, drop down new user. You could see how you can make this as many things. You could add a name, you could add a profile picture automatically for them. Choose an option. And this is the same way that we set up the other dropdown. So I'm just going to go through it a little faster. And there is no default value. I mean, you could give it a default value and just say the input should not be empty. Now, when we go ahead <clears throat> and click this add button, we know exactly which role to give this new person that we're creating, which is going to be our dropdown new users value. But now we created an account, but how will the user <clears throat> whose email we put in be able to log into this account? What we need to do is send them a password reset email. And it's just going to be the result of step one's email, the new user we created's email. And we can change this to be like, we created an account for you. Um, reset your email, reset your password to log in. And then we can just hide our pop-up. Let's try this out in practice. I'm going to go step-by-step -step for this one. Let's click on this plus sign. All this is going to do is open our pop-up, which I realize that we have not set up that functionality yet. We 
we want this to show our pop-up and then we can put in an email so i'm going to do how to's with bubble at gmail.com and let's say they are a developer and then let's click add this is going to create an account with this email and then it's going to send how to's with bubble at gmail.com a password reset email and then go ahead and hide our pop-up and i'm going to click reset over here i can put in a new password and then click confirm but nothing happens if we go over here we can see that we are currently on the page reset password which is a page that is given by bubble when you create a new application now when we go here on this button confirm we actually need to go ahead and add a workflow we want to reset the password of the current user and we want to set the reset password equal to the first value and then the second one equal to the second value and you can go ahead and change this so that it's actually better and then let's go back to our workflow over here we can just navigate to our page manage users let's try this again i'm going to click our reset password button over here Six, one, two, three, four, five, six, and then click confirm. And we're sent back here and we can see our new user down here. There's no way in the database to see the password, but you can go ahead and set up a sign up login flow and test that you are able to log in with this new email. If you're looking for a video on that, I'll link it in the description box below. Thank you for watching. I hope this was helpful.